some of the helix forms that I've made. Um, this is probably one of the more recent ones I've made. It uh, it's three pieces. Take it apart. Those are all cut from the same piece of wood. I cut the one out of the middle first uh, using the V-block jig. Um, and then I cut this piece off from the outside. Let me cut backwards. I've got this one. It's really neat because uh, I don't know if you can see it from there or not. It's got a hole that goes through the center of it. It's got with a different kind of offset. And it's also got a another one that goes around it. And the piece it's mostly just what remains of the cylinder. But it goes in here. Either way. And this one here is probably my favorite one. It's probably the best one that I've made. It comes apart real easy. And other end three. It's not even sanded, that's the finish left by the uh, from the blade. I've got a special jig that I use that handles these larger ones. Um, the first one I showed you, the maple one, was done with a V-block. This is my Excel spreadsheet I made for calculating the dimensions for uh, helix forms. Um, what you're looking at here is a graph that shows the end view of the cylinder that the helix forms will be cut from. Um, I got four parameters for each cut. Uh, the first one is the radius of the cylinder, uh, bevel angle, it's a tilt of the scroll saw from 0 to 45 degrees, where 0 is horizontal. Center line offset, the distance between the center of the cylinder and the center of the spiral blade. And pitch, that's units per turn of the helix. All the controls are over here are um, scroll bars. I can uh, bring the first curve onto the screen by adjusting the bevel angle and the center line offset. I'll get that curve like I want it. And the curve has width to it to show the uh, curve for the blade. And I can use measurement lines to uh, measure what that width is. If I change the uh, size in the cylinder, it's going to change the scale. I've got to check this. So the distance between these two lines is shown right here. That's 35 thousandths. I want to make that, I'll make that a little bit larger just to show you how it's done. And that made it wider. So I'm going to leave that curve as is and then bring in the other one for another cut. And then I can rotate each of these curves individually. And what I'm trying to do is to get them aligned where the, the distance between the two curves is consistent most of the way around. 
I'm going to make that outer curve a little bit wider and change the center line offset and then rotate it back into place and let's go to the other end all the way around and then that's got the two curves centered up together as I change these parameters all these numbers up here change and I can take those numbers, write it down, and take it into the workshop and set up the scroll saw you know, with those parameters and it'll cut out helix forms with this with these parameters and this will be the end view of it on the end view, these there's four regions here this one is going to be you know, what's left over of the cylinder after the helix forms are cut out it's got most of the surface of the cylinder left on it this will be the larger helix, this horseshoe shape and then this one will be inside the smaller helix and the fourth region is this little triangular piece here usually it gets broken up during the during the sawing but sometimes it survives, it's very fragile I'm going to make a helix on a piece of paper to wrap around this dowel and then wrap it around good and tight and then where the edge overlaps onto the paper I'm just going to put a mark on either end and then unwrap it And then between those two points on this edge, I'll draw a line across. And the pitch I want to use is uh, one inch, so I'm going to draw marks spaced one inch apart with one of my marks as a starting point. Get on there. I'm going to do this on both edges. And then if I want it right hand thread, I'll have it the lines angled like that. Left hand would be like that. I'm gonna draw a diagonal from one to the next. I think I want to have it right hand thread. I'm going to wrap this back around the dowel and it might need to be shifted just a little bit to get the ends of the lines to line up and use a bit of tape to hold it in place I'm going to draw just a mark and there's one already here on the fence and then the line as it goes into the blade will stay lined up with that mark so that's going to turn down you know one turn for one inch of movement along its length